Welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're going to be painting a huge dog. His name is Willie, and uh, he's a Bernese mountain dog, as in Bern, Switzerland. And he's a big working dog. He's got a real sweet disposition, and I just couldn't resist painting him. So this is Big Willie. Also wanted to talk to you about some of the things that we painted on the last episode were the irises. And we're doing a little bit, you know, this show is a little work in progress. And what we're going to be doing is showing you what we painted last time in the beginning of the show so that you can see the final product before we move on to the next painting. So these are the irises that we worked on in the last show. One was the demo that was done actually during the show. And the other was one that I did just to practice. And you'll see looking from the, pretty much the same composition how they could turn out to be two different paintings. So I just wanted you guys to get a chance to see what, you know, what, what the final product was like. Not a lot different from the show. Only did a few things. Glazed over the top of it, increased the light and darks, and that was about it. Today we're going to do uh, paint Willie. And Willie's got a huge amount of energy. And what I would like to do is paint him as, as close as I can in a one hour sitting. Now, if you've watched the show before, you know that this is a show that's shot live to tape and that means there's no editing so whatever I get done in this period of time is actually what happens so I'm gonna I'm just gonna go for it doing something this fast and in this amount of time really helps you to be loose so I'm just gonna go ahead and start my palettes a lot different than I normally do but Willie's got different colorations and normally, I don't use a lot of black, but Willie's got a lot of black, and I'm going to kind of base coat him with a, a black color and add some color to it. So I'm using some painting medium. I'm going to dip it right into the black, and I'm just going to start. Now, as far as the composition, it's a lovely, lovely photograph, but I wanted to just concentrate on Willie's face and not the background. So we're just doing big Willie here. I'm just going to base in the black. Remember, I always start with the things I know I can do, sneak up on what's scary. When you've been working on paintings as big as I've been working on lately, this seems almost small, so it's weird to get used to a different, different scale. Someday I think I'll paint Willie on one of those 48 by 60s. He really is a big, big dog. I'm just scrubbing it in. And I'm going to add, he's a very, his markings, and, and one, of the, one of the things on the breed, actually, actually when they talk about beauty and people and beauty and dogs, <laughs> you wouldn't think they're one and the same, but they are. People look for symmetry in facial features and in markings on dogs. That's, that's usually when somebody, or, you know, when you equate something with being beautiful, it's because there's symmetry. And Willie has beautiful symmetrical markings. So I'm going to base coat all the black first. I'm jumping around the canvas just because I want to just skip and get all the black stuff in first. Let's see, this is lighter hair. He's got some white markings here. Took me about two hours to draw Willie. I greeted him. Again, I really wanted to make sure that I captured his likeness. Because, I, you know, I, I want to get, <clears throat> I wanted a good picture of the dog, but, but I also wanted to capture Willie's soul. He's such a sweet dog. Again, I'm just scribbling. Okay, not sure what I'm going to do with the background yet. I'm going to leave that alone right now. Putting a really thin coat on because I'm going to be adding other paint to this. And I don't want it to be so thick that I can't work with it. Okay. One of the things to be conscious of are the edges. I'm not going to go all the way into the white area here. I'm just going to paint just up to it. If you leave it a thick edge, it's going to look like it's plastered on. 
and uh, there should be a smooth transition in his hair. Okay, he's kind of gray, got some different color in here. He's got a lot of red in his, you see him out in the sunlight, he's got a lot of red that shows, even in the black. You'll notice that the palette is, the colors are so different than what I normally do. I've got a lot of ochre out there. Very warm colors. Somehow I picked up some red. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to keep painting. I'm going to go ahead and put in, I love these little rust markings that he has. And I'm going to go ahead and put those in next. I don't have all the black in yet, but sometimes it helps me to, to keep my place. I don't know about you, but I get lost if I don't have um, certain things in. They're like, it's like a road map. Okay, so he kind of has a little bit of that going here. It's like a little loose drawing with paint. Now, a lot of people, when they do a portrait of a person or they do a portrait of a dog, they start with the eyes. And uh, you can start with the eyes. It really doesn't matter where you start. You start where you're comfortable. And I thought for just to get a lot done in a quick amount of time, I'd go ahead and start with the, the black, back, black part of his fur. And that way, we'd cover a lot of area. And that way, if we have lots of time in the show, then I can really play around with his eyes. OK, that looks good. I'm going to get another brush. And I really should mix that color. There's nothing straight out of the tube that comes with that. So what do I want to do? There's a little bit of red in that area. A little lighter, a little bit of orange. That's just a little too bright. Now, you know I like some bright in-your-face color. And I can go ahead and do that at the end, but if I do that at the beginning, it's, it's not going to look right on the dog. So, uh, I'm, Now, how am I toning this down? I just start putting color and I'm telling you what I'm doing. I added, I had some reds. It was too bright. So first of all, I wanted, the, the question I asked myself, is it darker or lighter? Well, I think this is about the right value, whether it's light or dark, it's still too bright. So in order to tone it down a bit, I'm going to add its complement. And the complement of this rust would be this sap green. So I'm going to add just a little bit of it first. I like that. It might be a little too bold, but I'm going to put it down anyway. I can always tone it down. It's harder to bring it back up than it is to tone it down. Again, using a little bit of medium. So he's got these, where does he have these little spots? So like right here. Oh, that's a great color. I like it when that happens. Well, if I get a bad color, I'll tell you that too. There really aren't any bad colors. To give you a good example is there's a house on the, on the court next to ours that just got painted. And the color looks terrible, but it's not, if you just see the house by itself, it looks great, but the house next door to it, it clashes with that house. So it's not that the color in and of itself is bad, but you have to be happy with your neighbors. And so I have to correct myself. There aren't any bad colors. You just have to be harmonious with your neighbors. Before I started painting, I didn't even think about when you're planting flowers, too. It's the same kind of thing. Those need to match with the color of your house. I would have just picked out flowers because I like them and planted them and then wondered why they didn't all look so good. But th they need to go with the color of your house. So everything here on the painting has to be harmonious and happy. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy looking at it. And it's going to be a, what I call a screamer. You know, these markings are great because it makes him look like he's always smiling. 
He probably is. He's, he's really a happy dog. Now there's some whiskers right here that I drew in, but that was silly because they're so small. I'm just going to need to paint them over on top of it anyway, so I'm covering them up. I'm actually scrubbing out the pencil line. It was too early to put those in. Okay. That's helping. Now it's interesting because his eyes are similar to this color, but they're a little browner. So I'm going to go ahead and add some, you know, while I've got that color out, add, but I think this brush is too big for that. We'll see. I'll try. You're always supposed to use a brush that's, that's a, almost a little uncomfortable so that you're not drawing with it, you're painting. But sometimes I overdo it. Okay, I'm looking at the brown of his eyes. That's a little bright too, and you need to tone that down. And instead of the green, I'm going to add a little of the blue, because it's just a little bit further down the color wheel. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to use another brush because I think I, it would be too close to the spots on his face. And, uh, that wouldn't look good. One thing when you're doing eyes, whether it's a dog or a person, is that eyes are a ball. They have form. So one solid color is, is not going to do it. You're going to need to break it up and have a dark, medium, and light in order for it to have form. So while I'm putting in the dark hair, I'm going to need to go over it with, see this brush is too big. Wow, I'm not used to, see now this is funny, I'm not used to painting this small. I'm actually going to have to get a smaller brush than this. What am I looking for when I'm looking for a brush? Well, normally in the early stages we don't want a lot of control, but you know what? While I'm painting his eyes, I do. So I've got one that's got a short, stubby little, it's, it's well worn, and um, I'm going to go ahead and, and use that because it's got it's a stubby head, so I'll have lots of control. Okay. Yeah, that's better. That's dark, that's dark. He's got a little bit of... I'm going to contaminate it with the black and just kind of brush mix and go in here. Some days the painting's more systematic and more methodical, and some days it's just all across the board. And today, the whole day's been all across the board. <laughs> I have not been systematic today. He's got like, it looks like a little eyeliner. When you're painting faces on portraits, whether it's a dog or a person, to help with that symmetry, if you do one thing to one eye, you do the, do the other thing to the other eye. I think we talked about that when I was doing my self-portrait. Whether it's me or a dog, it's the same. Okay, That's, that looks good. Right here, it's kind of shadowy. He's got a little... Uh, A little bit of red-gray stuff right above his eyes. I'm going to put that in. Painting something like this is good. It, it helps you do colors that you might not normally use. Anytime you take yourself out of your comfort zone, it helps you grow. Sometimes it's a painful process, and sometimes it, it works. I always try new recipes when company comes over. And um, <laughs> my husband says, why don't you, why don't you uh, wait and, and uh, 
you know, practice on at home first. And I said, nah, because you know, if, <laughs> if it works, you could have this great, great thing for lots of people. If it doesn't work, oh God, it's embarrassing. But you know, I do the same thing on this show. Um, if it works, it's great. And, and you know what? This is what I would be doing in the studio at home. This is, I would be trying something new. So it might, why not show it on TV? Okay, right above his eye, he's got a little light up here. That might not be light enough. It might be too muddy. We'll see. Again, I'm not going to correct until I get the other things in because until, you, until you, you're next to your neighbors, you can't tell whether your color is right or not. Okay, I like that. He's also got like a little under his eye, a little more of that stuff going. Only it's not quite the same color. It's a little browner. Let's see, that's his eye there. Yeah, it's starting to make sense. I'm putting in his, the white areas because you, you paint those a little bit bigger Again, I'm looking for a small brush. You paint the white areas a little bit bigger than you would because then when you go over them, you don't lose the white. Now, the corner of anybody's eyes, again, like people or dogs, same thing, they're not white. They have a lot of different color going in there. And if you paint them too white, and you, you, you see an amateur portrait and it's just this white, white thing sticking out at you. Um, it's just not going to work. So add a little blue, gray, any color, just to tone it down a little bit. With him, he's a warm dog. I'm going to add a little red. And, and if you've seen the show before, I just like it. So he's got a little pink in here. You can barely see what I did. If I can barely see, you can barely see. Oh, we don't want him to be bloodshot. That might be overkill a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's good. In the corner there. I'm going to go to this corner too because, again, the symmetry is really important. It also, there's paintings have a rhythm, and this helps you keep your rhythm going. Okay, that's good. It's got little whites in the. Oops, I contaminated it with some black. Okay, put a little white in there. I'm going to put his, the rest of his iris and pupil in. I am just looking at blocks of color. And some more brown. to make it a little bit lighter right in the middle. That's a good start on the eye, and I'll probably just leave them alone. The eyes are one of those things that, that I want, you know, I really like to do and like to get something uh, showing up. So I, uh, I could sit here and futz with that all day. I've only got an hour, so I want to just really, really whip this out. Um, now I'll go back and start putting in some of the other things that are going on. He's got like a little, since I've got this muddy brush, I might as well do something with it. And he's got a lot of uh, grayish kind of hair coming out of hair. That's too, way too dark. Now, if you notice the white part of his fur, if I painted it straight white, it would look plastered on it. It wouldn't give you any form. So I'm going to have to add some color there. Okay, Willie. Would have been nice to bring Willie in, but he's just a little too big for the studio. Now, 
Now on the photograph, this area looks pretty white, but if you painted it white, it wouldn't translate well. I'm adding cad yellow deep to warm up the white so it's not quite so muddy. Now if I were to just put black right in here, he would have no form at all. I'm going to add, I don't even see it, okay? There, there are things that you paint because you see them and so you're following what you see on the photograph or on the subject. And there are also things that you do because you know a thing does that, whether or not you can see it or not. In order for Willie to have form and for his face to look three-dimensional, I'm going to have to add some things I can't see. Now this value is going to have to change here. I'm going to choose a reddish color here and add black over it. That will help his form occur. Uh, why did I pick red? You could have picked a, a little bluish tone, but he's, he's got more warm coloring in his fur. And, uh, and I simply like red. So that's what I'm going to use. Can't be too close. Now, that was, that was a screw up. <laughs> it can't be too close to this color here, or the markings won't show up. So it needs to be more of a brown, umbery kind of red. So I'm going to add some black to this. And some cad red light actually mix a color. I've been doing a lot of brush mixing right on the canvas. Okay, that's nice. That's better. Because then that's not the same as this red and the markings will look different. Okay, that'll work. Back to the fatter brush. That looks just the same as what I did. That's not going to work. I'm adding a little white. And part of the problem was not so much that my color was bad on the palette. It's that I neglected to wipe off my brush before I went into another color. So I'm going to do that now. I'm not using any solvent, I'm just using a regular paper towel. Wipe off the excess. Now this is just going to be a slightly lighter gray. I still don't think that's enough. There, that's better. Ah, that's nice. I'm going with the grain of the fur. You know, I'm still scribbling. You know, I like to scribble, but, but it's got to go with the grain of the fur. Otherwise, it's like as little rough as up. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Okay. So what's happening around his eyes, this area that I keep avoiding? Okay, I think it's lighter here. Somebody, uh, a fellow artist who does beautiful work in pastels and oils had, had cut the show and she thought it was interesting to see a, a different approach to painting. And I must confess, I, I, I probably am really different. I didn't have formal art training. I basically just painted every day and um, I did take some private lessons, but I, um, it's more just from practice. So my ways of doing things, it, it, it's like, uh, it's like looking up a, a destination on, on uh, the internet. You, you, you could get three or four different routes of how to get there, but they all get you to the same location. So um, I, you know, I encourage you to see how many people paint and then just pick the one that you like the best. And I take a little bit from everybody and, and, um, and my own thing and take what you like and leave the rest.
Okay, so there's light around his eyes. That's lighter. That goes, I just keep getting lost up here. What, what's going on here that I'm not paying attention to? I need some more, I need to go back to the black. Sounds like an ACDC song, but it's, I need to get this black back in here so I remember where my place is. A little eyeliner. Willie looks like he has makeup on. Okay. Oh, that's good. When you paint this fast, a good exercise for you guys at home is to try and do this and try and do a painting in one sitting in an hour. It, it forces you to be loose, to let your personality come out. That looks good. Okay, that looks like a little bit of white there. I'm going to finish my drawing, see how I'm doing. I'm doing a rough little sketch of, of his mouth. I can always tidy that up later. It's almost like sculpting. I love his little smile he's got. It's not quite, not quite so black. Okay, this is a little bit of this. He's got a lighter color hair. I'm just looking, I'm all over the board looking at, okay, where, where am I lost? What have I not put in so that these things start to make sense? He's really dark hair. So these are the questions. Is it dark, light, is it bright? or dull. Am I putting in my neutrals? As far as the composition, when I ri originally set this up, I wanted to make sure that he went off the page, both on the top and the bottom. Actually, all, th all, all the sides. And I wanted to make sure that this interstitial space and the other side, the interstitial space on this side, were not the same. That would be boring. Be, you can have symmetry on his face, but not, not in the background. Okay. A little lighter there. I keep these brush strokes going with this fur. Okay, what am I ignoring here? This, this is, it's lighter. Oh, poor little guy, he looks like an old man now. I, I made him a little too gray. See, his eyes are starting to pop out, okay. So we need a little, now what I'm going to do is step back and take a look at my work and see where I'm at. Okay, right now he doesn't have enough value contrast. I could go ahead and, and uh, really work with that area, but right now I'm going to put in his nose and wait to adjust the whole thing till the end. Because I might not be fixing something that's broken. That's what it is right there. Okay, so it's really tempting to play around with this, but I gotta keep moving because we really wanna get this done. I'm gonna start with this nostril, get that blocked in. You can see a whole world and this guy is, you know, Willie is so big. <laughs> He's got huge nostrils. 
Uh, let's see, it's dark there. And really, it really would be black in the very recesses of that because it would be the absence of light, hopefully. Okay, unless you're looking at them from down below, which is usually not the case with a dog this size. Okay, let's get his tongue going. There are ways of getting texture in a painting, and you can use that by actually having thick paint or the illusion of texture. Most of my paintings are, are painted very thinly, so I usually use the illusion of texture through brushwork. That's very light. His tongue is very light. We'll block in the main part of that. Again, I'm going with the form. He's got, uh, he's got a little ridge down the middle of that, so I'm going to put that in. I have to tone it down. I put some red and tone it down with its complement green. Might not be toned down enough, but we'll see. Yeah, that's a little better. This brush is probably too small for what I'm doing here, but I'm almost done, so I'm not going to switch now. But I will have to go over it again because it's going to give me brush strokes that I don't want. Okay. There's some bright red right, right in here. And it's just this blob. He's got a little pink here and here. All right, I'm going to blend that little area. Now, if I had used the correct brush, that's not a good one to blend with. I need a stiff brush to blend with. If I had used the correct brush, I wouldn't need to be doing this right now. That's better. I forget who, who said that, you know, when you got, to, when we sent a man to the moon, it was with a series of, you know, millions of adjustments to the equipment, to what they were doing, and that's pretty much what's happening with the painting. It's a series of adjustments. I'd like to think of them as adjustments rather than mistakes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slap on a lot of white. Again, I want to make sure I get this canvas covered in enough time. I'm running out of room on my palette. We'll see what I can do to keep it going. Uh, first of all, most of that is in sunlight, so I'm going to add a little orange to the white. I'm going to use pretty much a solid covering of that area, and then I'll go back in and put different tones in there. I think if I were to do this at home in the studio, I might put in each individual color, but this will be faster. If you're painting outside and the light's changing, it's good to know how to do it fast because you, you need to whip something out before the light changes and your whole painting's different. Okay, this is, need a big brush for this area. That looks pretty cool with just his tongue <laughs> hanging out there. Okay. I'm using a lot of medium. I'm going to stay away from the edges. This is where you really get some exercise. Again, I'm going with the form.
I'll address the edges later. Right now I'm just going to get this covered. That was a whoops, but that'll help out later. There are things that I don't mean to do that end up working out really well, and I like that when that happens. And then there are times when I don't mean to do something, and I just have to wait till it dries. Need some medium. Again, you got to shake at first so, because it tends to separate. Okay, so we got enough here. I can start putting it in other areas. I want to make sure I have this white center part covered really well before I start contaminating it into other areas. Okay, under there is a little bit of dark. So right now he has the pasted on look because that's how it starts. You notice I lift it up so I can get the bottom of the canvas? Or maybe you didn't notice, but that's what I did. It's important to paint all the way to the edges. Okay. Well, he's getting there. You think about painting fur on a dog, there's a great experience for painting hair on people. They're the same. Okay, now I need to fill in some of the places that I didn't do and make sure that things are, uh, you know, closer to coming together. A little black. I'm going right up into the white, right up into his little marking there. I don't know if these little spots are called anything. I just call them little spots. Okay, there's that. What is it doing around his head? That needs to be lighter. Okay, so now I can pr probably add some of this. Now I start contaminating with the, the white into the black. This is where it will stop looking like it's pasted on. Right now it's just like this, uh, uh, you could have cut out white and black areas and they really look like two different paintings, but this is, it's all in the blending. So you take a paper towel and a big fat stiff brush and we're going to push this hair up into here. You have to wipe it pretty much after you do each one, like a few strokes and wipe. Now it doesn't look so much like that's pasted on. And watch how the hair is growing because that's the, that's the direction you want to go in. And I'm going to Go ahead and do it again with the symmetry on this other side. It's a nice softer edge. Some of it kind of sticks up like that. I also notice while I'm, you know, it's, it's tempting to go in this other area where I, I think it should have been lighter, and I think I'll just do it. Yeah. Also, you know, with people and dogs, um, another similarity is that the shape of your eyebrows really helps determine the shape of your face. 
If you get the eyebrows wrong, it really doesn't work. Okay, so that's light there. This needs to come down like that. Uh, he has a little bit of light right here. Again, I'm going with the shape of his little ear, or big ear. This is pretty light here. And I'm doing, it's very tempting to just go over and over and over the same thing. It, it takes a lot of courage to put a stroke down and stop. And that's what I'm going to do here. Stop, stop, nah, <laughs> I, I lied, I went over it again. I try to do that so that I just go over it once. OK, there's a light here. because some of the interesting things happen in just those simple shapes. OK, that's dark. That's kind of light there. What's going on here? This is, he has a dark shape there that I didn't put in. I'm constantly going back and forth to the reference photo saying, OK, what, what is this shape doing here? So I look at this, and there's like this little triangular shape here. And it also comes down to uh, here. OK. I'm going to put in some of Willie's other fur. Need to soften this area here. I'm going to go ahead and put, before I do anything else, really quickly get his nose in and then see what I can do to Whip the painting in shape. Have to lift this up again. He's got some dark stuff going on. See what I, I'm not even using more paint on the brush. I'm just simply using my dirty brush with what's there. It has this, we've got to give some face to this little, form to this little muzzle part. That's starting to work. If I don't wipe it pretty quick, it's just going to start blending together and look really bad. Got to get his nose in, then we can play with him. It's kind of a gray, peachy. The sides are going to be darker. That's going to help give it form. I hardly have any paint on the brush and no medium. That won't work. Yeah, you think of dogs of having a black nose, but if you look at that reference photo, it's anything but black. I'm giving him kind of a Rudolph little nose here. I should have painted Willie's. Uh, Christmas pictures. He had this great hat on. He looked great. OK, so what am I doing? The edges of the nose, in order to give it form, have to be dark, a little bit lighter as you get a little bit lighter and pinker as you get over here. And the very light in the middle.
And this is almost a blue-gray. Sometimes I'm just all over the place, but I just saw this and thought, oh, I gotta put that in. And what's this little thing? I don't know what that little thing is, but it doesn't matter, I see it on him. You don't need to know anatomy to be able to paint somebody, you just need to be able to observe and put it down. Anatomy is helpful, though, when you're trying to figure out what something might do um, if it's not in the right position when you start out. Okay, I'm going to put some of the light in the middle. He's starting to pop. Good. Good Willie. Good Willie. You all know that I get back from my work and uh, because when I'm real close to it, I can't see what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just filling in the holes. But uh, when you step back, you can see where it's going. See this light here? Got to be light in the center. And even that could have been a little lighter and not quite so muddy. But it's too late now because I made it muddy. Okay, a little lighter there, a little lighter there. Now it needs to be warm. Okay, I think I need to blend and reevaluate where, where we're going with this guy. I'm not, I'm not, still not sure what I'm going to do. You know what? I think I might leave the background white. Yeah. Because it, it's not, it's not bothering me as it is. It helps him pop. I'll add a little bit of warmth to it. Uh, I could tell right before, as I, was, as I was going to the canvas, I could tell I had too much yellow on there and that was going to mess him up. Although he does have yellow behind him, but he's got a cooler yellow. I love that mustard. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little dent in this canvas and so hopefully I can uh, take some water and put it on the back of that and iron that out we'll see if not that's when you give it a little texture okay so we've done a lot of work on Willie now you take a moment and I just want to reflect on okay where where am I with him what could I do to him to help make him pop um, he's definitely popping. He's definitely coming, on, coming alive. So what we can do to make him more of a finished painting? Uh, let's see. Could blend the nose a little bit. Sometimes though, when I blend it, it takes away all the good stuff. So I think rather than, there are two things you can do when you're, when you're working on a painting to improve it. Uh, most of the time people think you need to add things to a painting to make it better but a lot of times it's really more of a subtractive process where you eliminate things to make things uh, uh, it's like it's the equivalent of writing and making things more concise it, it reads better so I'm going to take a look at him and I think I'm not that far along yet where where uh, adding it would hurt it uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add a few more things but I have to be careful not to add too much if you can say it with a few words, why babble? That's a little bit warmer hair. His, his fur needs a little more warmth. He's a warm dog. I can do a little more blending. Notice I'm keeping out of the center. That's what's giving this form here, is this light in the very center. 
And anybody that's watched this show knows that my, uh, my two favorite things and my reason for painting is to make things look three-dimensional so that they pop out and also uh, to give things form. So now that's not everybody's criteria, but those are the things that I like to achieve when I'm painting. It's good to have a goal and a plan of where you want to go. Putting some subtle warm yellow in here. I think I will blend a little bit of his nose. I'm going in the direction of each nostril. Being careful not to get to the edges because you don't want to lose what you just did, which I came close to doing. Okay, there's a little bit of light here, 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 here. Okay, the, the nostrils are not symmetrical, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit. These are things that you don't see. <laughs> They're really kind of cockeyed. These are things you don't see when you're, um, when you're that close to it and you step back and go, wow. Need to do something about that. And sometimes, too, it's just a matter of stepping away from it and, and giving yourself that distance. OK, so what's the dis difference? He's got it comes down here. I have to make either one lower or one higher. And I think this is about the same. So I'm just simply going to lower this one. They're not totally even, but at least if they both went down as far, that would make more sense. Yeah, that's better. He also has a little more stuff going on here. The stuff is probably technically where his whiskers come out. Now he, you know, you know he has whiskers. I've not painted them in. I think I'd I'd wait till they dried and put them just put them over the top. Or not at all because it's it's not not necessary. Needs a little light under there. Okay, I think we just need a little more brown. There are also, when you're painting, there comes a time when you can only paint a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of time. You'll get, you'll get to the point where you know how long you can last before you start getting sloppy and, and uh, you need to just pull away from it. It's interesting from doing this show, uh, I used to paint in three-hour blocks, and now now I, everything's an hour. So I changed, you know, I, because of the TV show, I've actually increased my pace. So um, it's uh, it's interesting how that will come up. So you need to know when you're tired and give yourself a break and and come back to it later. I usually go to another painting after one session. I'll, I'll paint for one session, then go to another painting so that I'm always fresh. Okay. I need to quit playing with his nose and move on to some other areas. I'm going to see what what's what could I help take to another state over here. Work on his little darks and lights. Okay, that's dark. That's a little darker. Leave that there. OK. Now, I hope that you've been able to see that in, in just one hour, you can get a pretty good likeness. Now, this is not, not a finished painting, but it's, it's, 
It's getting there. I think, I think it would just take one more time at the canvas uh, for me to touch up and, and make it really look like Willie. Uh, he's starting to pop out. I could do some more with this fur in here. Um, actually, I just work, I would keep working all over the canvas. And what I'll do is I'll bring it in for our next episode so you, and I'll point out the things that I did, like I did with the irises, so you can see where I've taken it. But he, I'm going to keep him loose, and I really, really want to keep him um, fresh. And right now, some of the stuff is kind of raw, but uh, it makes it look a lot, a lot more lively. Stop. I'm going to blend a few things here to keep it from looking pasted on his little spots. Get my trusty paper towel, because right now this is pasted. And these are not pasted on him. That looks a lot more natural. Better transition. Thanks for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul, and uh, we'll bring Big Willie back next time. <laughs>